Hey, what's up, guys? We just got called in. Actually, by complete fluke, I called my dispatcher to let him know I was tapping out for the night. I was out at 4 a.m. this morning. Had a pretty bad pull fire. I only got this one shot of the fire. a three phase line with single phase takeoff pretty pretty big job and the many times here we've had some crazy forest fires going on it's been extremely dry and now we've got some pouring rain so this rain pretty much uncovered any bad connection or cracked insulator that was getting ready to fail and we've had a couple pretty bad car accidents as well just make sure to keep people away from it you know what i mean uh transport truck left the highway here this it's only a two lane but it's a main highway this this highway come sunrise is going to be real busy the transport Left the road right here. See the tire tracks and the tall grass. I've got the power out to the whole area now, but that was still energized when we arrived. Neutral, neutral's down. As you can see, everything looks good on that cross arm there. Neutral wrapped around the telephone. I imagine that recloser tripped a few times. You can follow the tandem tire tracks down through here wow he went over 200 meters in the ditch this is just insane real soft swampy ground here too he hit that pole Right square on, right in the center. That pole basically rode right up and over the, the truck. Snapped that clean off. There's a good hazard dimension in the tailboard. Barbed wire from a barbed wire fence all wrapped around the pole. Those were tied on good. That ripped the insulator right out of the cross arm not sure where the pull top pin is what the rip the top right off that steel pin I don't think I've ever seen that before well whoever did those ties put them on right that's for sure so he carried on underneath this pole Oh man, like I said, something real good to mention on the tailboard. Fellows are gonna get tripped up in that pretty easy. We'll probably have to cut that barbed wire and peel it back. These are all communication cables, coax, telephone. Doesn't look like there's any fiber there. Oh, that's a fiber. That's a fiber right there, actually, with that orange straight. So we crossed underneath the lines over into this side. Fence post. Parts of his truck starting to come off. And there's the rest of our neutral wire. One more parts of his truck. Uh oh, uh oh. There's his bumper. Another piece of the truck. And I'm not sure what happened here. At this point, you might as well steer out into the field. 
going back towards the road to go at this pole. Completely took a section out of that pole. There's the butt, there's the top, and there's the middle. More barbed wire. That's a good tripping hazard. And then the truck crossed back underneath the phone lines again. Another piece of his bumper there. Some more parts. Fence post. And. Oh, this is nasty. This stuff. Through that bog. Came to rest right up in here. And then they got them towed out. That was a heck of a job towing that tractor up through that. already today been up since 4 a.m. it's 10 p.m. here now and as I was calling the dispatcher basically saying I want to tap out head to bed uh, give me a call at 6 in the morning if anything comes in he mentioned this other outage came in my area so we're gonna go check it out the other crews are out in another job might just be a matter of closing in a switch Regardless of what it is, I, I got two hours. That that fourteen hour rule, that's we're we're pretty strict on that now. I've gotta be at home within that fourteen hours. So it is our our city water supply, water treatment plant, water treatment station it says. Let's get ourselves on route here. Just gonna open my map. I know where it is, but there's two or three entrances into the buildings. The easiest way I find to search is by the meter number. It'll bring up the exact location where the transformer feeds at. So meter number 907. And other news, we're coming up on 100,000 subscribers fast. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and we've also got that giveaway coming up in June. So that'll probably land pretty well at the same time. As soon as I hit that 100k mark, we'll, uh, we'll be releasing that video. And it is the first entrance into the water treatment plant by the dam. So let's head over there and we'll take you guys along for the ride. Might be a quick episode. Might see something interesting. Might not. dark, cold, and it's raining. Alright, so we're on, on top of the dam now. Can't really see much. This is the, the smaller of a couple of dams for our main water supply. The building is down over that embankment. An access road. Hopefully, they left the gate open for me. So we're at the access road now. It's too bad you couldn't see nothing. The, the reservoir and the dam and stuff. It's kind of neat. Uh, so, pro tip, guys: if you call the power company because the power is out on your property, leave the gate unlocked so we can get in. I've I've got an hour, 20 minutes now after driving here before I have to be home. That leaves me less than an hour in troubleshooting and they lock the gate and it's a long road down from there it's not 
not walking. I can't see a thing. It's crazy how dark it is out tonight. There is a set of overhead fuses. Just gonna get repositioned here. Alright, so this is early. somewhere. Let's grab our flashlight. There's a line right there. And that taps off. Back there. Alright, so that that kind of makes sense there now. That's the main line. We're not actually that far from the sub. Substation's just down there, not too far. All three are blown. Oh, wow. That's not good. That's not good at all. So we can see the center. Center cut out. Doors up to down blown. That one's still closed in, but you can see the fuse tail. All frayed and same with that one. They're pretty heavy fuses. Not sure why both of them got stuck shut, but all three, all three of those fuses are blown. Uh, the main headquarters, there's no one in there right now. It's kind of a Monday to Friday gig. But if all three are blown and it's raining like this, probably a, geez, I hate, I hope a pole didn't catch fire in there. Wouldn't be good for tonight. So whatever it is, it's, it's not likely it's going to be something that I'm going to be able to fix on my own here tonight. But at least I'll be able to give the crews a heads up as to what's going on. The, the one we had this morning, the pole fire, we back up a bit. So when it's really dry, if there's any freshly cracked porcelain that cracked in the last few weeks, just vibration, wind, age, whatever, when you get a heavy rain like this, those hairline cracks, It'll, it'll track through the moisture. This is probably our guy right here. Yes, it is. So he's going to open that gate up for us. I'll uh, get back to that in a minute. Let's patrol the line here. all three cutouts open it's, it's probably not a small problem if it was just one sometimes you gotta pay extra attention it could be a cracked insulator that might be hard to tell all three blown like this there it is right there you can see already the phases are getting close together and the cross arms flipped around and the top of the pole she gone. That's burnt right off. Nasty. That transformer's just hanging by a thread too and she's still smoldering. Yikes. Alright, so we've done about all we can do here until we get some help. Uh, our friend showed up. We've got our gates opened up. First thing we did, we've got, uh, I popped those there are a couple doors open there and uh, he just opened the gate so I'll be able to get my truck over there all right so I'll uh, take a minute to explain to you guys how we're gonna approach this because I gotta hit the road here pretty soon so I just knocked those other two cut out doors open where the fuses were blown just so we get a visual disconnect before uh, before we leave we're actually gonna take the doors out and install grounds on the line We've got all of our gates open on either side, locked open. Let's let's take a drive back to the transformer there for a minute, and we'll kind of show you guys what's going on here. It's a real dry day, and uh, especially with the heavy winds and stuff we have, and for whatever reason, right? porcelain porcelain cracks. There's not a whole lot of it left in, this, left in the system. We use the, the polymer stuff now, but uh, you get an old porcelain cut out. It's got a hairline crack in it. And then you get you get some rain after all this dry weather, and 
that that high voltage is going to track through the cracks in the cutout. It's not going to trip the line because it's not tracking through to a dead short. It's tracking through into the wood. It's going to travel through whatever a foot of wood until it gets to a down guy or something. That's going to start heating up that wood and eventually catch fire, which is what happened here. So where this is kind of a private gated road into an industrial building, it's probably been burning for hours and no one was, was able to tell. Obviously there was no passers by or anything. So we definitely have an urgent situation here. This, this is our main water supply, water treatment plant. Along this road is the transmission line of water pipes. That's the main water supply. It's, it's fully enclosed, so if, if oil were to get on the ground there, it's not going to seep through the pipe into the water. But it's still a situation we don't want to get into. We don't want to chance that. If, if that transformer did fall and oil get on the ground, we'd, we'd have to dig it up and, and clean it up. And that would all be done through federal regulations. And We wouldn't be doing the actual cleanup. We'd be paying for it for, for an environmental approved group to do the cleanup, testing, all that stuff. We don't want that to happen. So we get our transformer. Let's shut this truck off here. What I would do in many cases, I would get a permit on the line, install my grounds on the three phase and my bonds. And I would go up in the air. Let's open this door. There we go. Let's see a little bit better. You can see the smoke, she's still burning. And my light is too bright. We're getting some bad reflections here. There we go, that's a little better. So, so what I would do, I would ground out those three phases, put my bonds on, and I'd basically wrap a set of come alongs right around that can and right around the pole so we didn't lose it. I can't do that here because that primary is down below the can right on that street light. So anything that's energized at primary voltage, grounds on or not, I can't be touching that until we have a second guy on site. So we've got one high voltage wire on the street light there, one jammed right up against the butt of the pole, one in the center. And that pole's still smoldering and the burns are actually down below that top bracket. You see where it says the 10 on the transformer? There's, there's two main brackets that hold that on the pole, and that pole's burnt down below that top bracket. That's a little 10 kVA. That transformer probably weighs about 350 pounds. It's enough weight that once we lose that pop bolt, she's gonna sag off the pole. The bottom one should hold it, but we're not gonna chance it. We wanna get a boom on that as soon as possible. So we've got a large truck coming. He's gonna take a permit, put the grounds on, get a strap, get that transformer off the pole. Our next step, this is the cutout, broke right in half. That's what caused the pole fire there. The next step, we've we've got a little bit of room to work with with this pole. Drop that telephone down a foot or two. Drop that street light down, that triplex. Hang the new transformer a foot or two down and put a five foot fiberglass extension on that pole. So, not not really a difficult job. It's it's a kind of a pain. Middle of the night, rain. Uh, I have to get a new transformer from the office. We're not going to put, put that old one back up there. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I got to head. I got to strike her for home in 20 minutes. So I imagine the crew will show up here before I've got to leave. Anyways, wish I could show you guys the whole job. But we got 14 hours under our belt today, so we're going to pack her in and head home. So maybe we'll see you tomorrow. That right there is how you install a preform tie.